Oh, isn't that where Wanda Maximoff is from? From the hit show WandaVision? What'd you call me? Jamie! You heard me. I'm Jamie. coming, Jamie. Hold on. Well, because cause whatever I say, why'd you call me? It's usually because I wasn't paying attention. But that you just you just you just destroyed the joke. You destroyed the illusion. What? The illusion is gone. What you call our me? Our viewers will now know. What viewers? Our 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 listeners. Who? He didn't hear me again. <laughs> 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 Got him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready for this year's wonderful event. We've got two contestants on our plane flying yeah. journey. Over yeah. to my right side, in the blue and red plane, we've got Garbalax, the snail Garbo. Oh, I'm gonna get there and I'm gonna get there slowly. And to my left, sporting a nice green and brown yeah. plane, that's Upchuck, the Upchucker Chuck Chuck. Ha. Huh. That's not a plane. He's oh. just he just has angel wings. Huh. They're they're really big. Do you <laughs> fall from heaven? No, that would mean I'm a bad flyer. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho. I hope you guys are ready for this year's race because I'm your announcer, Pino. And this year is a it, well, it's they're actually only going to pick up my laundry. Oh, uh, slow and steady still wins the race. Welcome everybody. This is the finale of forever this is the last episode of the podcast i'm so sorry that was a really good <laughs> opening thank you thank you that's what you can I'm expect really... especially when it comes to our favorite time of year the last episode of the season Even you know why it it's our favorite every year but do you know why it's our favorite i don't know it's because we get to watch some of the most the most goodest bestest the most well animated movies <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, of our time we get to watch some of the ghibli films Last a time, treat. a visual treat. Last time um, we watched, uh, what was it, Grave of the Fireflies? And before that, we saw uh, Castle in the Sky. So if you want to hear those, Lubita. feel free to go and watch those. Um, those were good times. Uh, that's, yeah. where, that's where you get to learn my true feelings of Ghibli. Um, and maybe you'll get another one this time. And, and we're uh, going in chronological order here, so... No, we're not. No, we're not. We, we planned to, oh. and then I was like, let's pick Porco Rosso. Fuck it. All right. Well, honestly, well, this one well, was we so... Well, we like, weren't doing... We weren't doing, like, in chronological, and then you just said, fuck it, I don't want to think about it, so I'm going to pick the next one. That works. And then... Who cares? <laughs> and then Pino said, fuck it, I'm not doing the we next one. We can do whatever one. we want. This is exactly. good, so, like, who fucking cares? Exactly. Uh, firstly, I just want to say hi to my compatriots, Chuck and Garb. How are you guys oh. doing today? Hello. Pretty good. You guys are all right? How pretty are you, good? Pino? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I could use some water right now, which I'm going to go ahead and drink. But um, I, was, I mean, how was your day? This is the this is the hydration second. Let's all... I'll get my water. Yep. Mm. That wasn't water. That was motor oil. Great. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to be going all night. <laughs> That's uh, that's a broken car. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you guys want to find us anywhere on the internet, you can only find us on Twitter. No, you can find us on our Patreon. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify. On Twitter, are we are the th at the Three Wee Bros. Um, I think that's what it was because I didn't write at anything three else. Wee Bros. At Three Wee Bros. Not that the Three. All right, that's at too long. Three Wee Bros. Or you can email us if you guys ever want to contact us at FunkyAnimePodcast at gmail dot com or contact you know the cooler one contact at FunkyAnimePodcast dot com. That's the one. 
Yeah. You could just I go want... to funkymapodcast.com. If you're lazy, you only... you're like, I don't know where I want to go. Just go to the website. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I didn't write down the other part because I ignored Chuck at that point. I, I have to thank the Patreon. Uh, I, I don't remember all. who I have to thank. <laughs> Everybody. Can I tap out? <sighs> Guys. Tap. Yeah, I want to thank Cream Puff. I want to thank Cosmos. I want to thank Jasmine. I want to thank Sid for paying us. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for, for paying and us money. Us and talking into chats. And joining us for some of those streams. We had a couple Thank streams uh, earlier this week, which was nice. Uh, yeah, an impromptu meme stream. stream and then an impromptu One Piece stream, which was cool. Ooh, um, yeah. I enjoyed the meme stream a lot. We, Me and Chuck laughed a lot. And it was, it was, it was great. We were li- reliving we, our we, vine, la- vine times. We laughed, we lost. Yeah, and we wept. We memed, we dreamed. I didn't weep. We creamed. Um, we I don't know about that one. I might have screamed, yeah. <laughs> I I probably screamed, if I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to join, go join. Because yeah. we have a fun time there, and you can see us talk about what shows we're watching and talk to us about the shows that we're watching. Exactly. On or off the podcast, um, that's all up to you. I mean, like, currently, I mean, we could talk about it in the miscellaneous, but we have been watching a lot. We've been consuming some anime outside the podcast, so it's it's very good. Very good. But to jump back on track, this week uh, we decided to watch, or at least I decided to force my friends to watch Porco <laughs> Rosso. Um, the only reason I picked this was because there was a plane, and I like planes, and because the plane uh, conductor, because that's that's the word, I, I promise you, it's plane conductor. <laughs> he looked like Definitely Dr. Eggman. Pilot. Yeah, plane conductor looked like Dr. Eggman, so I was like, hey, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> Let's watch this. This is the one. Um, but, um, before we get into some of those details, um, have you guys seen the movie before? What are, you, what are your experiences with Porco Rosso? I had not. I had not. This was, this was one of those Ghibli films where I was like, I want to watch it, but I never did. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever heard of this one spoken of too much, despite, I think, making a good, like, um, getting a good reception when it released. Um, yeah. But I feel like everybody just talks about, you know, the big ones, like Spirited Away or... Or um, Castle in the Sky, or um, yeah, the other I feared ones. away Castle in the Sky, Ooh. Neighbor Totoro, mm-hmm. Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, mm-hmm. all those types of ones. I feel like this one is definitely the it's it's a different vibe mm-hmm. than most other of like the Ghibli mm-hmm. films, and we'll touch so, upon it later because a lot of those yeah. other Ghibli films are a lot more fantastical, a lot more magical, mm-hmm. and this one is actually you kind of have it set in a realistic kind of setting, despite having one unrealistic character. <laughs> Well, in, yeah, in but this it, all all of this aged like fine wine. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is just. I was very surprised that because you know, um, what was Grave of the Fireflies? Grave of the Fireflies. You know, like it was okay, but it it wasn't the most gracefully aged film. But yeah. I don't know. By this I think time, like, it, like they wait, what really you, wait, why? Wait, wait, stride. why? Wait, why? Why do you not think it gracefully aged? I need to. I I object I to that. It just. It just. It I made think me you're feel weird. It didn't well, make yeah, because it was a movie about war. Because it was a movie about the brutality of war and the use of atomic bombs on people. I yeah. think. I think what Gar There's meant. There's a whole. I think, the whole reason. <laughs> it's to make you feel uncomfortable and make you be like, "Wow, war's bad." Well, dude. but I like this movie more. <laughs> I think. I think. What well, you, that, I, I'm not saying that you can't. I'm just saying that you can't go drag Grave of the Fireflies through the mud just because it was a movie about war that made you think. About the consequences of war. I think what he means... I I think what Garb means is that... um, I I feel like maybe um, Grave of the Fireflies is like a... I guess more like of a... Like, it's a period piece, just like this one. But it's it's theming and it's kind of like contents aren't as interesting or as easily consumable as as this one. Uh, Especially considering how, like, different they are in contrast. Yeah. Despite being set yeah. around, like, wartime, both of them. Yeah. Well, in, in this, like... <laughs> yes, it is a little easier to watch because the subject matter isn't quite as harsh. Mm-hmm. Though, you know, like, I don't know. It's just... It's a good movie. I just... I just I'm just not <laughs> about to hear the slander on Grave of the Fireflies and nah, sit with it. I decided not to make fun of it this time. You can this, hear my well, thoughts in the just, video. This, this movie was just so... Perfectly paced. That ah, uh, it's uh, it well, good. whatever. Well, I uh, 
Go ahead, man. <laughs> just just whenever just whenever I watch films, I'm always like, oh, that was kind of short, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Whenever whenever I watch, because you know, you you do have to tailor it to a shorter time frame than like series. So I'm used to well, because you know, I've I've been watching Hunter Hunter. You know, we'll talk about that later, but. And like that is a beefy story, and something like Poco Rosso is ninety minutes, which is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And most Ghibli films are all around that ninety minute mark, hour and a half. Still great. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's definitely. just a different experience. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah, and I I like it. It's just it's it's different, and and I I like I like the change of pace that it brings because we don't usually watch movies. Yeah, here unless it's related to a show we've already watched. Exactly. Um, so it's always good to just it, it's always good to just um, I don't know. It's, you're right. It's like such a contrast, like how they fit so much in in like ninety minutes or like uh, compared to like a season or two. Uh, and they didn't yeah, waste a second. Every single little bit was you know exactly how it needed to be. Exactly. I, I I agree with you there. Well, we'll 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 jump into it. Let me just let me give you all the rundown of what Porco Rosso is, and everybody who doesn't know. But I can't uh, run. I'm a snail. <laughs> I'll pour some salt on you. Ah! <laughs> Delicious. Anyway, Porco Rosso is a movie animated by, uh, well, as we all know, Studio Ghibli. Um, I finally said it correctly. Yeah, uh, Ghibli. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> you just said Ghibli. I can't believe it. <laughs> Ghibli. <laughs> Ghibli. Anyway, Studio Ghibli. Ghibli. Uh, H is silent, apparently. Uh, actually, yeah, what, what did I emphasize? Never mind. We're, we'll hop <laughs> said on Ghibli. Uh, written and directed by the ever-so-talented Hayao, um, Hayao uh, Miyazaki. Um, it is a Japanese uh, comedy uh, slash kind of like adventure film. Um, made in or released in 1992, uh, which was kind of cool because um, it's not a, long it's ago. Just, yeah. yeah, it's not it's not too older than us, um, which is which is kind of interesting thinking about it. Um, we should invite um, Porco Rosso into our podcast. You know, same age. No, anyways. <laughs> um, so this is actually uh, based on a manga, um, which I was not, I was surprised about. It's called The Age of the Flying Boat. Apparently, it's a three-part, like, uh, watercolor manga, which I'm not Whoa. entirely sure what that means. Um, but I'm guessing it was made in watercolor. Um, well, uh, it was uh, pretty well-received, as I can tell, uh, from the uh, ever-so-popular Wikipedia page. Um, box office was $44 million, um, and their budget was $92 million, which is pretty interesting. Um, uh, as Wait, Chuck what? said, it kind of ran for Wait. 94 Right, box office was $44 million, it says right here, estimated. And their budget, yeah, their budget for making the film was nine nine point two million. Oh, oh 9. you said ninety two million. <laughs> no, I said and nine, I was like, that was a no, terrible failure. I said, nine, I said nine point two million. I you just said ninety two. All right, you you go ahead. Yeah, I roll the tape. Anyways, roll the tape. Box office was forty four million, um, and then their budget was ninety two million, which is pretty Wait, interesting. What? But I heard. Okay. Anyways. Oh. Um, but yeah, it released uh, a long time ago, then it came overseas, and they dubbed it, and then uh, Disney, being Disney, um, decided to get, uh, what was, uh, they redubbed it since they purchased the rights and whatnot, or the, not the rights, the, um, the dubbing. What, what is the thing? Like, what the is redistribution. That thing? Like. Thank you, redistribution, and then they dubbed it, uh, and I believe the dub was only released, like, on DVD, and then... Uh, on Blu-ray and whatnot, but um, yeah, you can find it on a- anything. I think I didn't. You can find you can find it on HBO Max. That's right. They did purchase on. everything. It was on Netflix for a while, and then they I remember it. having it on my list, and I was so bummed because I was it like, will, "It's yeah. on there. I can't wait to watch this." And then, bam, <laughs> HBO it'll, Max time. It'll eventually come to Netflix in Australia. Uh, so you said uh, you said VPN time. <laughs> yeah, that well, and it's not on there yet. Though, hey VPN, I logged who in, wants to I logged sponsor into my, us? I logged into my Melbourne server. No, I used fucking Mozilla VPN. Mm, Fucked nice. up. Yeah, I, anyway, so, I use a different one as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> and and I I did check and I was like, God damn, it's not there. So, um, not gonna tell you that you need to, I don't know, join a certain crew that we met in this movie but maybe it's about oh, yeah. time to well anyways sea planes <laughs> anyways as we fly towards the next segment um let's uh let's talk about that presentation because this has got a it's got a good stank of good animation and mm. and a nice color scheme mm-hmm. there too uh what do you guys uh, let, let's hear your thoughts oh it's ghibli 
It's it's Ghibli. Like what else? <laughs> what else can I say? You know the style. You know how smooth it is. Like it's it's hard. It's really hard to further elab- At least for me, mm-hmm. it's hard to further elaborate that sort of stuff just because that Ghibli style, that um, Miyazaki style, is so recognizable at this point. Mm-hmm. Having such a huge like backlog and have such you know a <laughs> devout following and success. You know, it, it's it's what you would expect a Studio Ghibli film to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I did actually really enjoy, though, is that since this is a um, a story centered around flying, which actually, now that I think about it, there are a lot of Ghibli films that have either flying or being up in the sky for some reason. So I guess this isn't as huge of a point, but all the sky backgrounds and the sky- skyscapes. And the animation of these pilots flying through is always really fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the water, also very underrated in this film. Super well done. Absolutely. There was, was like, weight to it. There was, like, the fluidity that I would expect from water. Um, As someone who watches a show about water, like, 80% of the water at the time in one piece, isn't that animated? (laughs) So seeing this nice, fluid, nice and detailed, that was pretty nice to see. Yeah. And the mechanical items, like there's, oh, like yeah. this is all hand drawn and it is an absolute treat to watch because like mm-hmm. every, you can tell every single frame, like you can watch all of it go by. And it's like, wow, mm-hmm. holy cow, they did all that. Ghibli really is, they, they really do an excellent job, I think, of meshing, um, you know, they're, they're cutesy kind of cartoony uh, people and, and characters with very detailed and like real world like background or backdrops, like like as you mentioned, like the engines. I remember there was a scene in the bar where you can see like like all the bottles on the wall. I was just like, this is like this is the kind of like aesthetic that I I live for. It's like not, it's great, and not a single two of those background characters look the same. Whether it be mm-hmm. the pirates, whenever they were in the bar, or the very last scene where there were a bunch of people, mm-hmm. then it no two characters look the same. And I'm sure they look a little similar, mm-hmm. but they all have yeah. their own little characteristics that make yeah. them different. And it, and it really helps just cause you know, you, you usually get like those repeating backgrounds or like, Hey, we got to fill in some space. Let's uh, put him in a different shirt, but it's, it's <laughs> nice to have different people. Uh, especially when you have those large groups, just, it just makes it feel like a much bigger world um, inside a small 92, 94 minute video or movie. But yeah, it's it's a gooder. It's a looker. Yeah. It, it's a very good looker. A looker. And uh, you know what else is uh, very pleasant to the senses? Um, the music. Uh, what do you guys mm. think of the music? Mm. It sounded a little clownish here and there, and I thought that that worked quite well. Because it, it needed to be a little silly, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just I right. mean. Yeah, especially with, like, they have a lot of humorous moments in the movie, which yeah. I was actually surprised about. Like, I thought this was good. I mean, despite having a pig on their, their front page, I thought this was going to be a little more of a serious one. But they had a lot of fun with it, and they really reflected it with the music they chose in the selection. And even for those serious bits, they really knew how to just kind of, like, su- I feel like it worked. Like, everything worked. Like, it just, yeah. it just, it worked, it carried. It's, and especially in some of those, like, trans, like moments where... They're flying in the air. Like there's this, there's a specific moment in the movie where um, Porco gets shot down and like he has to travel um, by like boat or like it. He basically gets his plane towed over to Italy. Like that whole kind of like section of music. I was I was I was digging it. I could sleep to that. Um, luckily, I did not, <laughs> but I could sleep to that. I'm just like this is so it's so good. Chuck, yeah, you're, you're so quiet. Uh, no, well, come when you talk. Um, but the composer for all the music was Joe. Uh, Hisa Ishii, who's done a lot of Ghibli films, for example, he did Ponyo, I know he did Hell's Moving Castle, he's done a bunch of Ghibli films, and obviously he did this one, um, and I think he did Spirited Away, let me check, oh, he did Kiki's Delivery Service, that's a good one, and they, and he did do Spirited Away, so, he's done a lot, <laughs> and he's, he's done a pretty damn good job, um, with this, all of his music sounds super, cinematic i i really feel like is the vibe that i get just these big orchestrated moments and movements is just so good i i you know once again 
not something that I would put on a playlist to jam out to, but like to relax. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm, Oh yeah. Slap that on there any day of the week. It's good. It's good though. It's good. Very good. Man, Ghibli knows how to make some, they really know how to knock it out of the park with presentation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, always. (laughs) It's uh, the only sad thing. Question. The only sad thing is we didn't really get an OP or ED as movies typically do. So we have to skip our favorite segment. We did get a, a song in the end credits, but not too much to see in the end credits. It's pretty standard. Other it than the like bonus it scene. told a little bit of a story. But I can't pictures. read Japanese. <laughs> can't read it. Can't read pictures? Can't. But I'll tell you what the name of the song is anyways. Yay. It's called Once in a While, Talk of the Old Days uh, by Tokiko Kai Kato. Um, it, was a, it was nice and pleasant. Um, I had it playing in the background, but... Mm, you know, it's it did its job. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's pleasant. Very simple, very effective. You know, especially mm-hmm. with with <sighs> with movies. You know, you're gonna see them once. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna be watching in this ending twenty six times. You mm-hmm. know, exactly. So I, it's it's good. You know, it does what it needs to do. And then that little end credit scene where he fly. I'm like, oh, he fly. He, fly. he go. I just want to see your face, Mister Rosso. Goodbye, Mr. Rossi. Mr. Rossi. <laughs> Mr. Bacon. I mean, Rosso. Oh. 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 Um, but yeah, that, it's, it's, it's our best section. We, <laughs> we had to skip it, though. That's um, sad, but uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. All right. You guys ready for some, uh, some of that plot? Let's uh, quickly go through that. So movie starts out with, um, with our ace pilot, uh, the menace of the Adriatic. I like calling him menace, despite he's just a bounty hunter. <laughs> our Mr. Porco Rosso. And he's just notified that, like, hey, we got some, we got some space, spa- I almost said space, <laughs> flying plane pirates, <laughs> flying pirates, uh, and they're they're harassing some of our of our uh, of our boats here. Um, they abduct uh, like tw- what was it, twenty one, twenty two little kids, a lot of children. a lot of children, and they were uh, like, but- wait, hold on, we can't separate them. That would be mean. Yeah, we can't separate them from their friends. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> those those pirates were just too nice. I loved them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they take the kids because they need some money for ransom, and it's up to Porco to save them. That entire kind of like sequence, I was I was in for it. I'm like, look at this. This is just like a, waking up on a Saturday morning watching some super, some cartoon. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I loved it. It was it was serious, but it was also playful at the same time. Especially because like all those little girls were so adorable. They're just <laughs> what does this button do? Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, it's Rosso. They were just so. Uh, I can't see you. <laughs> I can't see you. Please, way. I need you to sit down. <laughs> Easy, you missed him. <laughs> but that whole segment, I, I was ready for the rest of the movie. I'm like, okay, so you're you're. This is gonna be one of those uh, fun time, good feeling movies. So yeah, it I was, set I was that up. Ready. It established that right on time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After saving all the kids in, in, in a wonderful fashion, he goes and visits the, um, the Hotel Adriano, um, which is a hotel uh, in the middle of the ocean, which is kind of cool. I love when there's just like random cities or, or buildings in the middle of the ocean, uh, which is run by uh, Miss Gina, which is a friend of his uh, from a long time ago. Um, in the bar, um, you see a group of like more, I almost said space pirates. <laughs> Keep wanting to say space pirates. You see more of the pirate heads of of the Adriatic area, and they're all just angry because they can't do anything because Porco's in the way. Uh, you also cut to a man they hired called Curtis. Um, I believe it's Donald Curtis, or what was his name? I posted it in the chat. Let me see here. Uh, do do do. Filling time. Filling time. Filling time. Filling time. Don Kurt. Don Kurt. <laughs> oh yeah, Donald Curtis, and he is an American plane. Uh, no, he's just an American plane. Uh, he's a pilot from America and they hired him because they needed somebody to, uh, you know, match the speed and match the power of Porco Rosso. Um, they thought they had him. They thought they had him, but there is no, so there is no talk of fighting or, or bad housery in, in this bar because Gina is also, um, you know, the owner of the hotel and the uh, main attraction cause she sings and that singing bit was amazing. I loved it. Oh, I loved my, all of that. She, yeah, the fluid movements, everybody was just enamored and this this piqued Mr. Curtis's interest. He instantly falls in love with Gina and tries to make a move, but she's like, sorry. <laughs> hey, Porco. And then he goes to Porco. Um, you get a little bit of a hint of just like Porco's little background when he eats by himself uh, on the second floor. 
and you see him complain about having a certain picture up on the wall and they kind of zoom in on it and there's like four guys and Gina there um and heavily implying he's got a he's got a sad little past there and I I was hooked at that point because you know me I love mysteries <laughs> I love mysteries and I want to know why this man's a pig uh, Oink. but yeah um after doing after after the whole bar scene um uh they're <laughs> Sorry, I just had a massive brain fart. I was just like, your energy was way too high there, Pino. Um, so it's coming out too strong. The following day, pirates uh, they they go ahead and do some of their missions. You know, as they they had to do their dailies for their gotchas, and um, <laughs> they go ahead and do that. And Curtis is like, you know what? I'm gonna mess around with this pig. Uh, intercepts Porco, who was um, actually on his way to get his plane fixed, since it was actually having some problems in that first initial opening. And Curtis is like, ha ha, pow pow, bitch. And then uh, shoots his plane down. Uh, he was that he salty. Him. And yeah. Porco was like, oh, you wouldn't have gotten me if this damn plane wasn't acting up. <laughs> exactly. And um, I was just like, I kind of didn't, I, I knew he wasn't dead. But I'm just like, wow, they really went there like that fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, Porco, he was actually on his way to get the plane fixed in Italy, which makes it now a much harder and longer journey. Uh, to go through because instead of flying there he's got to hitch a ride on a boat on a on a train and then reaches the house of his buddy piccolo uh you know king of uh namek uh no uh piccolo an old grandpa looking frogman um who pays who charges you way too much to to to, to make a plane i thought that was my favorite bit from mr piccolo well you well you know that you know Ain't money's she- the the paper's worth more than the money that's printed on them. You know? Exactly. And Porco, he he's he's used to Piccolo. He's worked with him in the past, and expecting that his sons uh, were still in the area, um, uh, is brought you know brought into reality, saying that like, oh, my sons, they left uh, they left because there's no work here, and is introduced to the. They got to do the war. Yeah, they got to go do the war. They're introduced to Ace Mechanic, Ace Pilot Maker, Ace whatever she is, Fio Piccolo, uh, the granddaughter of Mister Piccolo. And initially, Porco's just like, nah, a girl? <laughs> Please. Uh, but he eventually warms up to the fact that, hey, um, Fio is, like, trying a lot. She's actually, like, she stayed up awake, like, a whole night planning what the new ship was going to look like. Or plane. I've got one piece on the brain. I'm sorry. <laughs> the new plane's going to look like. And initially, uh, you know, he warms up and he's like, okay, kid, you got the job. See, that's what um, I'm saying. Like, this movie has got it all, man. It's got action it's got mm-hmm. adventure it's got women's rights it's got himbos mm-hmm. it's got a <laughs> it's got a it's got a piggy i love pigs yeah <laughs> um but yeah this is this is the part of the movie where um it kind of hit me that it was just like they were in italy and thinking around this time because it does take place in or around uh world war one and this was around the time where um italy was leaning towards or has already become a very fascist kind of nation uh mm-hmm. which i was I was like, I was bewildered. I was like, yo, like I knew, I knew they brought up some of the like political stuff, like in Grave of the Fireflies and like kind of like dark subjects, but like having that pop up, um, I was just, I was, I was taken aback, bino. but I was, I was happy about that. What? Bino. Yeah. Um, Porco Rosso is a, a World War One veteran. So it's after gotcha. World War One. Thank you. Thank you. So after. I think it was like, oh wait, no, I don't know. What I'm talking yeah. Cause then they're leading, they're and leaning towards the fascists. couple fascist. years. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah they those solid couple of years in between the two wars. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. this you know, was where like everything the, was rough. Wasn't this like the 30s? I don't um, I don't think they specify a, a time, but I do know, at least according to the the wiki and some references, this was like in or between the Great Depression. So it could have been around the 30s, maybe a little post or pre. Uh, so who could say? Yeah, but um they really I feel like they they sh- they conveyed it pretty well cuz like they Porco travels through the city uh one of those days and like you can see like propaganda on the wall you see like army men everywhere you don't see too many like men out there since they're all enlisted um and it's even more kind of like emphasized when uh the workers come in for Piccolo shop it's all the it's like basically the women in the family yeah <laughs> and I was just like yeah let's go but I'm just like where are the men <laughs> like I didn't it didn't hit me when I was watching it I was just like yeah. where are the men um he then goes to like a movie theater uh, to watch a movie, and he's interrupted by one of his old compatriots. I don't remember his name, so I'm gonna look him up real quick. <laughs> um, but he's he's met with his buddy, um, Ferre. Ooh, it's Italian. Ferriaren. <laughs> Ferriaren, I believe. And he's just like, hey, um, 
you know, you say you, F. <laughs> well, <I> say <laughs> you like. Well, that was his. That was his call sign. Yes, um, but uh, he's just like you know they're looking for you. You know you got a bounty on your head, and uh, he's got a bounty on his head mostly because he's a, he's considered a deserter since he didn't want to fly for a fascist nation. And, like, I don't remember the exact thing he says, but he's like, I'd rather be a pig than be a fascist or something like that. I'm just like, yo, like, wow. <laughs> that was <laughs> like the that. point where I was like, wow, this, like, you know, this, this is really holds up. But I also thought that it was much older, uh, finding mm-hmm. out it's only from, like, 92. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I, yeah. uh, I guess that makes sense, but still, like. <laughs> well, because this was, like, because... I'm trying to do research on the fly because that's what I always do. Yeah. Even if it's not my, uh, <laughs> even if it's not my episode, because that's what I do. Yeah. So this was after. Um, let's see. So we watched the first two, mm-hmm. and so this is the sixth Ghibli film. Because mm-hmm. the first one, well, the first real Ghibli film came out in '86, which mm-hmm. was Castle in the Sky. And then they released, you know, once every couple of years. And yeah, Very they're good. just, you know, just let you know. It's good. Um, but yeah, um, his buddy warns him like, hey, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do you a solid. I won't arrest you here, but you, you got to get out. Like, I'll do what I can to try and hold him back. But the secret police are on your back. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, while he's doing this, obviously, uh, the women of the Piccolo family are building the ship, getting it prepped. Um, there's an excellent kind of like car chase scene, um, that I, I very much enjoy feel, uh, stops by. He's like, Porco, you need a ride? She's like, oh, I need a ride, but I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> and so then they, they outrun the uh, secret police, which was both like, I was kind of like worried cause I didn't know what, what direction was going to, but it kind of ended in a nice humorous, but successful manner where yeah. they managed to outrun him. Um, and then they go back, um, to the shop. He's like, we got to. Like, I, you know, if it's finished, great. But you're coming with me. I got to get out of here. Well, you're not coming with me, but I need to get out of here now. We got to skedaddle. Exactly. She's like, uh, I'm not letting you leave. One, because you need to pay us. And two, because I already made this next, this little uh, passenger seat. So uh, come in. <laughs> We're going. Uh, yeah. Which is adorable. <laughs> Joke's on you. She, <laughs> Joke's on you. You're not, you're not rid of me yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, she goes uh, with him with a newly improved plane, uh, capable yeah. of going super fast. And, um, you know, they, they have to leave. Italy, uh, and what he want, what Porco's goal, like Porco doesn't want to do anything at this point. He's just like, I gotta go back and I gotta find out what's going on. Finds out that all the pirates were hired by the um, by the fascist regime, saying like, oh hey, uh, we're gonna use you because we need more manpower. So it, eff- it effectively ruins Porco's bounty hunter career because if he goes after the pirates, he's you know government's going after him. So he basically has nowhere to go. So he ends up going back to his home, trying to relax a bit. Um, only to be ambushed by every pirate <laughs> in the area, yeah. uh, which yeah. was hilarious. Uh, they were just about to mollywop my boy uh, until Theo makes a stand. And, and she's, she's like, like, hey, that's you, fucked, dude. Hey, sh- stop it. You're a pilot. Well, said pirate. You're a pilot. <laughs> well, Pilots yes, are pi- honorable. And everybody yeah. just swoons over 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 Theo. Like, Miss Theo, you are oh. truly, you are truly the engineer of the gods. <laughs> and I thought that was great how they just uh, how she just stepped in and everybody just like like became putty. It was great, and um, you know everything seemed like it was ending good. They're like, "Hey, are you, don't fight him, but we but we need to get our revenge, Miss Fio." And yeah. out of the crack of what I call the boulder that surrounds Porco's house comes Mister Mister Curtis. He's like, "Hey, hold on there, buddy. I want to race you again." For two reasons, Gina denied me. Uh, so I'm coming. Ooh, is that a is that another is that a woman? Uh, so woman. <laughs> in his in his uh, attempt to challenge Porco, he sees Fio and he's like, "Hey, you know what? Let's raise the stakes. Um, give me Fio uh, if I win, and I get prime if, rib. Yeah, and if you win, um, we you know I'll pay off uh, all your debt for Fio uh, for Fio's uh, plane cost." And, you know, I was a little skeptical because, you know, Porco didn't want to race at all. But, um, you know, seeing that Fio was in danger of, you know, being sent over, uh, you know, to her doom of marriage. Uh, it's true. He was just like, no. To an American, no less. Nah, no, Ugh. just uh, couldn't be us. Couldn't be couldn't us. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. <laughs> uh, he, uh, you know, he accepts and feels just like, oh, 
she was worried the fact that like she knew she was like that part was a little confusing because like she she challenged him in the hopes that Porca would have said yes. Uh, but the fact that he did say yes, she was like super relieved. I thought that was such She's a like, cute Thank moment. Fucking God. Yeah, what? she like she cried a little bit. I'm just like, no, why did you do that? <laughs> you didn't have to. Um, yeah. But it was great. That was a cute little moment. Um, while they prepare uh, for the big race that's happening in, in the next, I guess, day or so. I didn't pay attention to when it was supposed to be scheduled. <laughs> um, they have what a nice little days? moment at night. Um, and Theo is asleep, but she turns around and for a split second... Split second, she sees that Porco's like pig like, you know, pig like body looked human for a moment. And she wakes up, she's like, Oh my God. He's like, Oh, I thought you were a man. You look like a man for a second. And he's like, No, no, I'm a pig. He's a uh, wink. She asks him, How did you become a pig? He's like, I just, I just ended up that way. And then he, well, he's, didn't he tells, he say like a witch. A witch? I don't yeah, remember I a witch. He said a witch did it. Like, she, it was a throwaway line, or at least in the sub it was. Yeah, I mean, I he know. he said, like, he was just changed into, the, I, in the dub, I didn't pay attention to what changed him, but I more so paid attention to what came after, which was, like, his sad backstory, and then he became a pig, is what I understood, or something. Um, Which actually really made me feel really, really, really bad. <laughs> I felt, I started dooming a little, uh, but we'll talk about it. Uh, he was, um, obviously he was part of the Italian army uh, at the time of World War One. He was flying with his buddies and they were um, ambushed uh, by, I guess, their enemy um, in order. And he's, you know, he's seeing all these enemy planes go down left and right. And to escape from all that, he goes up into the clouds um, and in the clouds, um, he looks up into the sky and he sees like a huge kind of like, I don't know, like a highway of planes flying through the sky. And he's just like looking up and he's just in amazement. And then coming up from the clouds below that he came from were not only his friends who died or who were shot down in the battle, but other planes flying up there. And he's just panicking. He's just like, yo, wait, like you had to come back because one of those guys um, was actually married to Gina. So he's like, mm-hmm. you can't, you're like, you can't leave. Gina's going to be all alone. Like, who's going to be responsible? Like, who's going to take care of her? And as he's trying to, like, fly up towards them, he's like, he's just, like, not able to. And he falls back below the, um, below the clouds. Oh. And, like, th- like, the fact that, obviously, that was representative of just, like, people dying and going on to, like, the great beyond or, or like, to their deaths and whatnot. But the fact that it wasn't his time yet and he wanted to, like, switch spots, I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, it, this, he's, a, he's a true friend. It was, was rough. rough. Like, and I think they executed it in a way where it's, like, kids w- will understand kind of what's going on. But yeah. it's not, like, to the fact where they're just, like, like, it ensued of just, like, oh, my gosh. Like, they're dead. Like, this is, like, very gruesome. I think they handled it very masterfully. And I was just, I was in love with that segment, despite yeah. me dooming on his Oh, behalf. it's so pretty. It's so pretty and, like, so emotional. It's so and it's, peaceful. Yeah, and it's it, it's kind of somber because, like, that's, like, that's the reality of war. Just oh, it's like, very somber. <laughs> like, despite them all being enemies, they're all just, it's all just one straight line. They're just going to their doom. And I'm just, like, like, there. I don't think there was any way, like, other way that they could have pictured that especially with the theming and like the whole plane thing and it was so cool i thought those were that was like a ring of stars Mm -hmm. but then you know it it shows you no those are all airplanes those are souls drifting into the next or into the great beyond just like it's it was wild uh and i don't know like it was at that point where i was just like this is like i guess the fantastical kind of like mystical part of the movie that ghibli like the, the ghibli ghibli Sorry, I said Ghibli correctly the first time. Yeah, and then uh, you're like, I got must change it. <laughs> the Ghibli films are known for, um, but I think like keeping it m- more or less grounded into a kind of believable kind of sense, like someone could have could have imagined this or like had a near death experience similar to this. I'm just like, like like great. It was amazing. Like I loved it, um, which is hard because I never say I like Ghibli movies. <laughs> never. He just took. He just took He's the right never one. Loved it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was such a phenomenal. I think that was my like the standout scene, like uh, out of the entire movie for me. Um. But regardless, um, you know, she falls asleep. He's like, hey. uh, he's sad about it. Um. But the day of the race arrives. Everybody and their grandma's there. Everybody's betting. Pirate guys are are emceeing the whole thing, which I thought was hilarious. Um, yeah. And uh, begins the race. So what I understood is it was like 
was really a race, more like like an air battle kind of. Yeah, it was a dog fight. Yeah, is what it was. And so basically, um, you know, first one to die wins. Uh, no, first one to die loses, obviously, or get their plane <laughs> you incapable <win>. of falling. <laughs> you win. Ugh. Um, but yeah, they had a they had a good dog fight in the air. Um, Porco is very honorable because he doesn't want to kill any pilot, so he was trying his best to aim for the engine to have Curtis like surrender in the well, easy way in the way easy way possible, or like get out of the race in that one. And that he sense. made him like run out his ammunition. Exactly, <laughs> and I thought that was so cool. Just like you know, you get more of Porco's character, and you get to see it in action. Just like he's he's a gentleman. He's just a, he's just a, your friendly old bounty hunter. He is. Um, yeah. Looks can be deceiving. You know? mm-hmm. Um. Well, all the while this dogfight is happening, uh, we jump to a clip where um Gina's at the at the hotel, and she's like over listening, uh, overhearing some comms, and hears that. Uh, I guess the Italian forces are headed towards the Adriatic. Um, I guess I don't, I, I don't remember if they were tracking down Porco. You, somebody correct me if they were Yeah, they were chasing him. Gotcha. So they were chasing Porco. Um, and she's like, I got to let him know because he's got to get out of there or else he's done. Um, so they're on their way, Gina and her forces. And by forces, I mean her plane. Um, the dog fight, um, decides to well both of their planes end up <laughs> they, they end up going down into the water uh but not before a funny exchange where Porco's guns jam and as Garb said uh Curtis's gun just runs out of ammo they just start chucking whatever they can at each other <laughs> I thought that was that was that was adorable that was cute they're like take that you think you can hit me punk uh, ass <laughs> and you, you Porco's having the time of his life you you see how heartily he laughs when he just like throws a wrench and hits him it was great it's good stuff. Mm-hmm. They land into the water and they they put up their fisticuffs and they start beating the crap out of each other. Um, in between that whole battle, and once they're all like, once their heads look like Usopp in in like uh, Drum Island, um, <laughs> Curtis reveals he's like, I I can't believe Gina loves you, and and Porco's he like, blushes. she can't, he can't, she don't love me. I'm a big and she's like ah she told me she wants you to be in the flower garden in the daytime and not at night and just as both of them knock each other senseless gina's plane lands and you know the 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 ref is already doing the count you know he's counting one two three gina's like porco get up and he's like porco porco and then he goes and gets up (laughs) he gets up he wins and that was cool. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I was happy that there was no bad blood in a sense between Porco and Curtis, because they're both just they're just men, just trying to be men, I guess. Um, they're men being men. Yeah, there's no bad blood, uh, but she's like, okay, everybody who's got a bounty on their head or doesn't want to be get. caught, get out. Yeah, just come to my, just come to the hotel. Wait till I get there. Drinks are on me. Everybody's like, hey, <laughs> drinks are on you. Let's go. I'm going. <laughs> hey, let's get some bubbly tonight. No. Um, <laughs> But yeah, everybody's getting out of there, um, and Porco is just uh, like, ah, oh, we got to make sure everybody gets out safe and sound. So he's like, take Fio, uh, Gina, just take her, uh, make sure she's safe. Fio's like, no, I want to stay with you. She's like, no, you can't. Um, so as uh, they were about to fly off, uh, Fio out, like, basically almost falls off the plane, but gives a, a nice little peck on uh, Porco's lips, or I believe it was a cheek, I don't remember seeing it too correctly, but gives him a little kiss and flies off. And then Curtis uh, walks up to Porco, and he's like, wait a second, what's wrong with your face? And he's like, there's nothing wrong with my face. He's like, well, your face mm-hmm. looks different. And I, I guess it's implied that maybe um, yeah. something that well, I missed. Because uh, they talked about it before mm-hmm. uh, at the hideout is when Flo was like, hey, what if I kissed you right here? Isn't, maybe, isn't maybe there like human. the curse? Yeah. And he's like, no. And then, <laughs> He said no. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You will not, and so yeah. I, I like to think he's still stayed a pig. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the mystery because you know they never show its face. Yeah, exactly. Like, After I that like point, the but I want answers. I always well, too want bad. answers. Read the manga. Maybe that. Maybe so, it's there. But it's in watercolor. I can't see water. <laughs> blah blah. I can't breathe water. What do you then expect you... me? <laughs> um, you get a nice little epilogue narrated by Fio. Uh, and it's just like, I still visit the Adriatic from time to time. I'm now like a big uh, head of a company for planes. Uh, I think Gina is too or something, or she works for her. 
Um, but they have a nice little epilogue, and it's like sometimes I visit and you know I see Porco and whatnot. It was great. I love seeing like. No, I thought I thought they said they never see Porco. No, I mean, oh, they never see Porco. I'm pretty no. sure they at least saw him no, after. No, they no, they said, and we never saw Porco again. Wow, now I'm even more sad. <laughs> And they're I mean, like, oh, well, Curtis, like, tells us about whatever and comes comes to visit sometime. But Curtis became a big movie star. He, he became is, the true. Roy Roger, dude. <laughs> he is Roy Rogers. I can't what are you believe, talking about? I can't believe you. Um, but, yeah, I, I love seeing the whole change over time. And then and then that ends it. It's a nice, short, little, sweet um, movie. Um, not too big thinky, but not too... No not thinky. Too small thinky. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's just the right amount of think. It it is thinky, is what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Middle um, thinky. And of course, we get that nice little um, end scene where you see the red plane flying in the sky, um, yeah. which was nice. Um, overall, yeah. I had a good time with the movie. Like I loved it. I I loved it. Uh, it was it was definitely something I wasn't expecting from a Ghibli film, which was oh, which yeah. was which was interesting. Um, if the other ones are like this, then hey, I'm down. But you know, it's pretty. It's pretty solid, I think. Yeah, not too yeah. on the nose and mm-hmm. just right. I think it's more of a pig's nose. <laughs> <laughs> Oink. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's jump into some characters. Unless you guys want to talk about something else that you found that you liked in the movie or a particular scene. I just overall in the plot, I liked how relatively light it was. There was no you know, huge conflict, no huge, like, end-of-the-world conflict that they needed to fix, which I always appreciate in a lot of things, because most, for most, um, like, these cinematic anime movies and shows, there's always a huge, big bad that you need to go after. Mm-hmm. Or and it gets, like, was, really existential. <laughs> yeah. But instead, this was a very... I I don't want to say laid back because there's still action and adventure and good fun triumphs, but like it's it is much more contained mm-hmm. and simple, and I really loved that because you know, especially with something like we talked about before, Grave of the Fireflies, that shit was ju- was just like I'm gonna punch you in the face every five minutes of film <laughs> with some new terror. And I'm like, that's that hurts. Exactly. And this is very, you know, a very simple and a very effective, a very fun movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like more than anything, because this, I feel like this brings, this is a kind of nice marrying of something like My Neighbor Totoro, which we haven't watched yet on this podcast. So I don't know if either of you guys have seen it. Um, And something like Grave of the Fireflies, where it's a more adult theming. But it is still very fun and doesn't take itself too seriously. And there are obviously scenes where it's like, you know, talking about not being fascist and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, war and everything. Trauma. But it, yeah, exactly. But it still did not feel like it was made for the express purpose to make me feel bad. It felt like it was made to be something to enjoy. Mm hmm. And I really did like about I did like that. Okay, yeah, I'd, I'd show like a six year old this movie. They'd probably enjoy it. I mean, if they oh, like yeah. planes, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah, show maybe. an adult. I know if I if I showed you this movie when you were a baby, you would have been like, "Oh, well, I was baby. more of I was more of a guy who enjoyed like locomotives and trains." So me I don't too. Know about that. Though, hey, let's me go, too. <laughs> guys. Man, I love choo choo trains. I <laughs> love trains. Good time. There's a there's a reason why I unironically love Spirit Tracks, even though everyone's like that's the worst Legend of Zelda game. I thought that wrong. was they were told. I was heard. I always heard that was better than um, Phantom Hourglass. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, trains are really good. We're gonna have to watch a train. Well, we did. We watched fucking. We watched uh, Bacchanal. Uh, Bacchanal. That yeah. was exactly it. Uh, I was like, we gotta watch. Uh, we gotta watch Demon Slayer, the train movie. Arc, it's true. I guess. That's whenever the next whenever it becomes movie. legal to watch in exactly. the United States. It's supposed to come out on in theaters, right? Or is it? Or is it going to like? I'm not gonna platforms? fucking go to theaters. To no, I mean, watch I'm not something I, for the podcast. I'm not going out either. Are you crazy? I mean, I went to watch One Piece, <laughs> but that was before everything. Anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, hey. It would have been really great that um, 
we did watch if like we had a movie day and we all just went to the theaters and watched a fucking anime cool. film that would be good next dragon ball movie come on next it's dragon probably ball got movie. a couple Let's more go. years what well <laughs> what do you mean a couple more years that thing's been going on for 30 40 years now i think I think we're going to get another Dragon Ball project. It's almost... Well, that's what I mean. Is that It's probably... They probably were already working on it, and they probably had to... It probably had a couple of years pushed back on it because of mm-hmm. everything. So, you know, it's probably got a little I... bit... But they were working on it. Right after Broly, they were working mm-hmm. on another one. So, yeah, what it I is want... gonna, There is going to be more. What I want is a retcon. <laughs> <laughs> I want Gohan... To be the only person alive (laughs) of importance, and that's it. Just roll us back to Gohan in high school. So, so roll, so roll me back to superhero, the high school arc. Give me the great Sandman, yeah, man, and then give me Mustache Vegeta. Oh, those are the only two things I care about. That's (laughs) all I want. Anything else you can change, but I need Gohan to be the main man. Because Gohan's the best. And he's been... Sh- everyone has complained that Gohan has been shafted. But those well, yeah. same people also complain that they hate the Great Saiyan Man. So I don't know. I, I don't I, know about that. How do you hate the Great Saiyan Man? How do you hate Gohan trying to get his book knowledge on? Come on. How, yeah, exactly. This boy is, this boy is so good. Ugh, man, Bruh, He can I kick know. your ass and probably do your taxes. I don't know. I, I don't know honestly, that's all I want. <laughs> The perfect. And that's man. all I want in a man. I'm from Come the on. IRS. Yeah, I'm from the IR. You're nuts. <laughs> yeah. oh Dude, my if gosh. they make an air, he will fly up all the way to Virginia. <laughs> yeah. All the way to Maryland. He's gonna be he's, like, you punks. He's knocking on the door. He's like, hey, uh, he busts my name the is Gohan. Door of the IRS tower. My client does not owe you a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, no, how I'm satisfying angry. Of, would it be to just. Kamehameha Blast. <laughs> oh. Anyway. I'd like to keep Blast, actually. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Krillin's a cop. <laughs> keep forgetting he's a cop. <laughs> That's why I want to roll it back. Oh, man. Sometimes. He was so pure before. Yeah, <laughs> like... He became what? a cop. Yeah, it's... And, and it doesn't... Like, that was just super being super. Like, why is it... Why? Why? No. But they need a job. They need jobs. What are they gonna do? Yeah. Karate all the days? They can't. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. You just you just like like Android eighteen said, just win a tournament and live off the money. So ah, here's she's the problem. she's so right though. Here's the, here's the problem is that what would What's happen the problem? is that if they were like, okay, we're redoing everything from Z forward, we're redoing. So we're just gonna do regular Dragon Ball, and we're gonna do what Toriyama actually wanted to do, where. It's Gohan growing up. Is that every people would mm-hmm. complain? They'd be like, "Well, well, where's where is Cell? Where is where is the freezer? <laughs> like, How very uh, like freezer? <laughs> where's my freezer? Where's my cooler?" But no, I think they could like, have that. Just like there's some aspects that could like they could have everything. They can even have Cell. Uh, just after Cell, just continue the high school stuff. Yeah, just yeah, just just keep showing the little boy. Give us an alternate to- timeline where. Uh, Gohan I'll write was it. the first Fucking... one to go Super Saiyan. Honest, like literally, all you need me to do. So Toei, come to me. <laughs> I'll tell you what you need to do, and then you don't even gotta pay me. You don't even as long as you Toriyama. do it in the. If yeah, Tori, I don't know. Toriyama barely does anything anymore. Um, I I wouldn't. But just, I don't blame him. Just do. Yeah, no, he's going to live off royalties for the rest of his goddamn life. He's made the most profitable, like, one of the most profitable anime franchises ever. Well, not just anime, just, like, everything. No, Pokemon. Oh, <laughs> no. true. Pokemon does. Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon the multimedia. Is... <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely dominate there. But... Just, ah! We're off anyway. topic. We're off topic. <laughs> anyway, Pokemon's right, so, so welcome good, back it's to fine. The, welcome back to the Dragon Ball podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Since we were talking about characters so much, why don't we just jump into some characters? Talk oh, about yeah. them. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're going to start with the main man himself, Mr. Porco Rosso. Uh, I, I believe they age dropped him, right? Didn't they say he was just like... Um, he said he, said he was, was like around... Yeah. In 1910, he was 17. Yeah. And I don't remember what year this movie was supposedly taking place. So I'm guessing he's like 30-ish or something. I don't know. Yeah. 
Well, it was probably it's gonna, uh, yeah, it was probably it's nice... around the thirties, probably like the mm-hmm. early thirties. So yeah, probably around his thirties or forties. Mm-hmm. Real name Marco, which was cool. Yeah, um, Marco the Phoenix. Mark, oh, I can't believe you. <laughs> Marco uh, Porco Polo. Porco is defined as having a cool ass mustache and a cool ass sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's yeah, cool ass. <laughs> no other notable features. Also, he's a good pilot, but um. Uh, I think he was, uh, he's, he's my favorite type of character. He's just like, he just felt like a, like a father, like most he's of the movie. He's just cool. He's just cool as hell. Yeah, he's dude. a dilf is what he is. He's awesome. And like how he's just like, he's just, he's not, he's blunt about things, but he like, he, he know, you know, he cares deep down. He's just oh, yeah. like, yeah, no, I'm not having a Brad work on my plane. <laughs> All right, Brad, you can work on my plane. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's he was, great. he was adorable in his adorable moments and he was cool in his cool moments. I thought he was awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than Porco, uh, we got Miss Miss Fio Piccolo. Uh, they did age drop her. She was seventeen, orange hair, looks like the Wendy's girl sometimes. Um, and I thought her character brought a lot of energy to the film, which I didn't think I wanted, but I, it was good. Like there was a lot more playfulness. Yeah, it was just yeah. the right like it needed just like a pinch of it, you know. And yeah. it was just a the pinch. right pinch. A bit, a bit, a little bit, yeah. I tried to go Italian, and then I went Mario, and then I was like, "That's not going well." <laughs> you, you just, you, just, I, I just thought you just lost your voice. I thought you just like, yeah. Um, but no, uh, she was great. Uh, as like you said, just she was the the little pinch you needed um, for this movie to work. She brought a lot of fun. She mm-hmm. was very, she's very bold. She's very outgoing, and it was great. I thought her character was was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's talk yeah, about yeah. Curtis, Curtis Donald, our American boy. Um, he was cool. I didn't, I didn't mind his character. He's just a playboy. <laughs> he just gets yeah. his heart broken. Uh, I also goober. like his mustache. He was, it was cool. Nice hair. Um, I don't know, like Porco and him, uh, they look like they. I don't know why every time, I, like when they were fighting, I was just like, this reminds me of just like. Like the old like boxing like the the gray and white boxing matches where you're like oh look at these guys go oh, I'm just like I, <laughs> like, I like those the, the fisty cuffs like I mentioned before but like I don't know something about these character designs just like work for me I don't know if it's their bone structure or it's how Ghibli. they it's, it's what Ghibli. it is yeah I think it's, it's all of it <laughs> the answer is Ghibli <laughs> yeah well, yeah it's it's Miyazaki that's that's really then we got Gina um the the short she got short hair she's very mature she can sing she can feed us all it's great um i liked her character a lot despite her not showing up too much she was a woman who knew what she wanted uh very serious but very kind at the same time um and you know what i you know you need more strong women like this in the movie or how you know she's also called madame but you know um she's awesome i liked her yeah yeah she's yeah. very fun she's a Another like another piece of the puzzle that I don't think the story would have really worked without. Mm-hmm. I feel like well, I feel like that with most of the characters, especially Flo and Gina. Both of them, I feel like, are very pivotal points to both like uh, Marco as well as like the story as a whole. So I feel like having those two as the other two like main characters, mm-hmm. I feel like worked really well. Definitely. I just like them both. They're very yeah. fun. Um, there's not too many like key characters to focus on because a lot of them are also part of a sort of group. But the last character I do want to mention is um, just Grandpa Piccolo because he had a yeah. lot of voice lines too. Um, mm-hmm. I think he brought a good contrast as well to the, some of the humor. He was that kind of like stingy man. He's like, oh yeah, it's just gonna cost you. Let's uh, let's do it. <laughs> I just uh, I really I I loved him in this because he. He's he was a pretty unique character because he's not one of those. Oh, I'm going for a flight. I'm taking. I think he's the only other male character who was not a pilot of some degree. Well, mm-hmm. he could have been a pilot, but he was not. He's, that's not his main occupation. And I really liked how he was there to uh, ground Marco a lot, mm-hmm. as well as kind of shove his granddaughter. <laughs> off to <laughs> to just go fly with him uh so i think one of my favorite bits is like the fact that it's like he kept he keeps like porco like he he's like hey you like my daughter you like my granddaughter he's like don't touch her <laughs> he's like yeah no. he's like stop it stop it don't do it <laughs> bad don't do it it's uh-huh. very funny yeah and i like his little glasses i don't know his the little, glasses, little glasses are great very fun 
Um, but yeah, everything else, everyone else was more of a just like, a, I guess, an additive just to build some of the tension, like the yeah. the pirate Table cruise. Dressing. Yeah. Uh, there was that one pilot uh, or pirate pilot pilot pirate um, who beat up everybody during the photo that I want to give a shout yeah, out to the the gang boss the gang boss he's he was great with a <laughs> big mustache and beard Miss Fio <laughs> oh good times uh, but yeah, yeah very not, fun not too many characters but I think they didn't need too many for this one like Agreed. they didn't need to focus mm-hmm. on too many well I feel like that's that's another thing with. These movies, like I talked before, it's such a different structure than mm-hmm. what we're used to seeing. So, like, for example, the like on my anime list, I'm used to having like 30 different characters that I need to scroll through. This has seven. Seven like main um focuses. Mm-hmm. And that's all they needed. Cause these sort of things you do not want to get bogged down. You will have like a couple main characters. Some side characters that are plot important, and then the rest are table dressing. Like, that's it. That's You just need it to make it look nice and for it to work as a story. But you don't need to think about them too much. Mm-hmm. So I really, I it's it's good. I feel like it worked very it's well. Very accessible, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I I would say that this is one of the most accessible um, Ghibli films, especially for people who are like, I don't want to watch My Neighbor Totoro. I don't want to watch Kiki's Delivery Service because those are for babies. <laughs> and then I'd say, watch this. This is about a 1930s no, first you, fighter pilot. First you say, you're the baby. And then show them this. <laughs> yeah. And then you punch him in the face. Yeah. And then they start crying and then I laugh at them. <laughs> you see, and you're like, haha, just like a baby. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, those are, it, it's a nice little short one, uh, at least for this, um, this movie and for this, this episode of the podcast, too. Um, I want to congratulate everybody. We made it to the end. Guys, Yay! we did. I, isn't it, isn't it kind of crazy that we've been doing this for three full seasons now? Yeah, actually kind of. I didn't think we were going to make it this far. We've lasted <laughs> longer than most Netflix shows. <laughs> guys, guys, all we need to do is stay around for like two more years and then we will have lasted longer than the Confederacy. <laughs> hey, it doesn't, let's it doesn't get that it, make, boys. It doesn't that make you feel good? Let's That's get it, boys. Funny. Dude, and when we, when we get past six seasons, um, we'll, we'll make it past Community. Oh, wait. Oh. Mm. Uh-huh. But then we just need two movies. Oh, you're right. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys. I don't think there's any other segment we need to do now. There's never, there's never over these three seasons, never, ever been a segment between... When we talk about the characters and when we talk about miscellaneous. I really never, don't think so. Guys, I don't think there's ever... Like, do you guys remember? I don't think there's ever been one. Wait, no. we do segments? <laughs> you're, you're I think right. you got a sticky note <laughs> on your desk right. there, buddy. <laughs> What's that sticky note say on your desk there, Chuck? Uh, wait. Why'd you put it in one of my drawers? I didn't put it there. Shoot, you think that's my handwriting? Shoot. Shoot you must be crazy. Like Okay, let's see. This says... I would have put it on your forehead. <laughs> Welcome to the oh. 77th oh, edition of Who's man. the Best Girl, the part of the podcast where each contestant oh puts forward God. their choice for Best Girl of the episode and duke it out for title on Best Real. Today our contestants, once again, Pido Guard myself and the Patreon. Oh, yeah. Who are you each advocating for? Oh, yeah. I'll go for Gina. I pick Engine Chan. I pick Grandpa Piccolo. <laughs> I guess I'll start. Uh, uh, you know what? Up. Yeah, what's up? What about? What about the Patreon? Oh, right! <laughs> you goober! Hey, man, it wouldn't be a Pino episode if I didn't mess up at least five times. And we I think segments? that's the sixth one. <laughs> we have episodes? <laughs> we have fans? Listeners? No. Let's see. We got the vote for, I believe, is Porco. Because it says probably Porco, though. <laughs> As, and then it's, so then it's Marco. So you go first, Pino. Pick All which right. one you want to talk about. I'll, we'll start with Porco. Porco ah. is, well, what's cooler than a pig, okay? Ice cold. A pig that can fly. And you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> pigs got to fly. You know, pigs, pigs on a pig skin can fly away. No. Uh, <laughs> Porco is great because you can have your, you know, tsundere is a cool but when you fly a plane and you're a pig, you're just even you're just that much cooler. Um, who? How many of you can say, "Hey, I got a pig who can fly"? Not me. I couldn't say that. 
Do you know how to fly? <laughs> I don't think I so. Wish. Uh, he would be great because pigs don't mind getting dirty because they're pigs. Um, laws don't apply to them because he's a pig. And, you know, as he, you know, as he says, he's a pig. It doesn't really matter. I do. Uh, I do love some of like the small things he said, like he'd rather be a, a pig than be a fascist. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I love that about him. Yeah, man, he's so free. He's, his, his character is just so free, but it's also. And he doesn't want to kill, you know, like yeah. unnecessarily. He's a gentleman. Yeah. He does smoke, though, which yeah, I'm not a, a huge bit. fan of. It's all right. You know, you just tell him, stop, Let's, get but some then help. He won't. Listen, if we, if we could meet him in the modern day, we just go, get no, no. <laughs> What we go ahead and do is we show him, we show him cells at work, code black, that first episode, and then he'll get it. He'll feel bad. <laughs> he'll be like, shit, I cannot smoke. He but said, I'm not going to smoke. But that's, that's all conjecture, because uh. obviously... He's still smoking. It's true. But you know who else also smokes, I think? Who? <laughs> I think Gina did. Did she smoke at one point in the movie? I probably. I probably. Doesn't matter. She's got a voice of Guys, a Gina also smokes. Bad Damn, character. Can't believe you. <laughs> I mean, nah, back dude. in those days, people were being told, like, cigarettes are healthy. They're good for you. Well, good yeah, for your lungs. It's called, it's called propaganda <laughs> by big, big tobacco to sell you more things. It's all right. Remember, guys, big tobacco... Bad, Bad tobacco. tobacco. Hey. hey! Woo! <laughs> Anyways. Only tobacco's the wacky tobacco. I can't Amen believe it. That. Wacky what dacky. Uh, anyways, Gina is great. You know why? Because she's got a whole ass island. And you know what's on that island? A hotel. Dude, you know what's in, in a hotel? Beds. <laughs> and there's even like plants and shit growing off it? That's a yeah, cool man. ass Have island. You- and you know what I like? I just like islands. You know, me, Garvin, and Chuck, sometimes we play games where we think we spawn on an island and we Dude. have the time of our life. If I were to spawn every morning on that island, shoot. <laughs> that doesn't the, matter. Every day I think be I the just, best day of my life. I think I just chose the island as my best girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I think um, she's uh, her character is such a strong kind of character because she had gone through, I don't think it's just one marriage. I think it was a couple marriages. Three. I think it's twice or three. Three, three. marriages. All of her husbands died. Um, and she's still going. She's still living her life despite um, the sadness, despite the, the struggle. She's still hanging in there, uh, making sure that, you know, she's living her best life and, you know, providing for all of her guests because she's, she's awesome. Plus, she can sing. Plus, she, she, got, she, she, got, she got good style, you know, and short hair is yeah. great. It's amazing. It's great. And she can fly a plane. Look at and her. she's got the kiss of death, so if you want to die, it's easy. <laughs> hey, you said Yoko number one. Let's go. <laughs> Well, okay. So now, now you brought up a whole nother reason why I don't like her. Then, dang, because you said "Kiss of Death" and "Kiss of Death" is from "Darling in the Franks," and "Darling in the Franks" is really bad. I can't believe you. <laughs> so, Gina also bad. Sorry, don't make you. the rules. Wow, can't believe you. You lose. No, you get nothing. Now tell me why you pick Grandpa Piccolo. Because you stole fizzy lifting drinks. Uh, I picked Piccolo because he's a, he's a short little stout guy. He's a good mechanic. He had a Ghibli branded uh, engine. And he said, wow, this is a good engine. And he made airplanes. That was a funny bit. Money. I saw that Ghibli logo. I'm just like, ah, you're, you're, you're very funny, Ghibli. you funny. <laughs> yeah. And he's very good. And he's protective of his daughter because he's like, you better not. Don't do it. You better not make some little piglets. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. great. And he's yeah, got but... cool glasses. Because you got to have glasses if you want to be right. best grill for me. But Chuck. What's up? I ain't saying he a gold digger. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I don't think... If he thinks he's going to be able to dig gold out of me, I don't think so. <laughs> if he has a side hustle, I'm fine with that. That's fair. That's fair. I'm not I'm not here to judge this man. Plus, he's got a big family. That means there's a lot of good food to go around. So, you know, oh, big families, yeah. they got a lot of people big who fam- got to cook. <laughs> big dog got to eat. Hey, man. Big dog. Hey, yo, am I invited? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but if you think we're all incorrect and we all should have picked Theo, which I'm hey, surprised hey, none of us hey, did. Hey, 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 hey. Huh? Did you forget someone? Oh, Garb? Huh? Garb yeah. went. Come oh, on now. I, just, I, I, must, I, I must have zoned out completely. But if you think... You I'm pretty sure Garb went, did he? No, I haven't. 
I'm sorry. I gotta See? talk about. I gotta talk See? about that airplane. I'm not crazy. You're yeah. crazy. <laughs> I gotta talk about airplanes. Oh man, that airplane! It's just. It's the star of the show, really. It's sexy. Look at that thing. It had a, ha- a whole redemption arc where it got overhauled. It, you know, a one of a kind. You know. It's Not, true. There is only one of its kind. It'll only fight we, back a little bit here and there. You know, give you a little bit of smack talk, but mm-hmm. you know, all reliable. That's what they call it. You know what? I'll, you know what I'll tell you though. What's that? The gun got jammed. It's okay. Ugh. Sometimes, also, sometimes um, it gets a little jammed. You know. Also, I want to. Uh, I just want to say, uh, it's, it's it's not a train. Oh, he's right, dude. Trains. Ugh. You know what? If we add a tier list, train is like SS. Trains like SS list. plus I'm, tier. I'm, I'm not going to dispute that because See, trains are pretty damn wonderful. It's true. Trains, but there were trains no trains in this movie, so uh, uh, so uh, this, this movie gets a zero out of five. False, no trains. False. There was a train. <laughs> what do you mean? Here. What do you mean? What, his his he, he's, his plane was transported um, after he got off the boat. It was on a train. Oh, Never mind. Oh, yeah, there was, a train. there was a train. We're good. Five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he napped on the train. That's right. Yeah, it's uh, locomotion, Porco Roco, dude. Loco Roco. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Yo, is oh wait, oh, did we just solidify what our what our thumbnail is? Is it gonna be just Thomas <laughs> the Tank Engine with <laughs> with Porco's face on? It's easy peasy. Easy peasy. No, we didn't solidify. Someone it. We'll write that it out. down because I'm gonna forget. <laughs> gonna forget. Do, 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 do. No, I'm kidding. But, um, you know, but now. Airplane's where it's at, man. I mean, seaplane, you know, you can't even crash. It's okay because it's a seaplane. You know, I'll agree only because it's the color red. Yeah, it's good color. Good color. I don't agree. But you if know. you think we're wrong, email us at funkyanimepodcast at gmail.com. That's the only email we have. Uh, if you're sending it to anything else, you're wrong. Or, you know, you can you're send not it to, allowed the, to, to the cooler uh, one. We got... We got we got some we got some Lee mails. Yeah, Ooh, Lee mails. We got two, both from Alex. Thank you, Alex. Alex. Uh, first one. Congratulations on a successful season, Buckos. Looking Thank forward you. to more in season four. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man, we're looking forward to it too. Forward. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Continue. Uh, second one. Serious question. This is a serious question. All right, everybody, put on your serious face. Put on the serious face. I know. Wipe off the dust. We haven't used those in a while. Um, Have you ever missed a fictional character like you miss real life people? The answer is yes. The answer is Um, yes. Did you want us to tell who it is? Sure. You Uh, go first. Spoiler. Okay. Next. Who's next? (laughs) Uh, I feel whenever Leorio comes in for Hunter Hunter and he's like there for like five episodes, I'm like, it's my favorite character. And then he leaves. And I go, no! Like back to medical school, buddy. It's, and I'm like, he's my favorite! He's so good! Um, but I love him. And I also love people in One Piece. Like, all of the characters, because you miss them. Because they never come back. And then I cry. <laughs> cry all the time! That's it. How about you, Grungle? I accidentally left my materia on Aerith, so... Oh, oh no! no. You, you don't really miss, miss her. You don't miss Aerith. You just miss those materia. <laughs> okay, I admit it. I just miss the materia. She had all my white mage. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> He's angry. Uh, yeah, that's a shame. No, I'll tell you. You know who I miss? I miss Mikado Ryugami. <laughs> Not really. No, I miss Shizuo. I miss him. I need to see him throw more cans of that. <laughs> Things that hold cans. Entire in. vending called? machine, yeah. Entire yeah. vending machines, entire signposts. I miss. I miss the entire crew there. That's those are the people I miss. I miss a lot. I also Whenever miss I... Jelly Jiggler. Just just because I miss him. <laughs> Poor guy. My baby Rest in peace. Is a forty-five year old. Forty-five years old. <laughs> uh, oh man! But if you miss anybody else, send us another email. <laughs> oh man. Guys. Any send us emails. Uh, besides that, I'm that I just finished watching the Greed Island arc of Hunter Hunter, and now I'm watching uh, Chimera, Chimera Ant. Ant. So I watched one episode, and then I started B Stars because I was yeah. forced to. <laughs> well, I watched that, and then I said I'm gonna also watch Doctor Stone Weekly, and I'm gonna watch um, 
ReZero weekly, and I'm going to watch Beastars weekly, and it's going to not work out for me, but I'm trying. <laughs> hey, man, you're hanging in there. Anything new with you, Garb? Uh, I started reading Naruto. <laughs> nice. Believe it. Naruto! It's good. Naruto? You reading I, it's better than watching. Yeah, well, I tried, because like, I'm not going to skip straight to Shippuden. I'm just, that's not... Shippuden? Why would you skip to Shippuden? Well, that's what, I think Naruto whatever, original's um, better. Like, I've been had people tell me, like, why didn't you just skip to Shippuden? And I'm like, well, why, no, why would so I? that's so dumb. Why you mean, would you, you go to Shippuden? We skip but, all the character development? What exactly. You, and so, you, can skip, like, you can skip Shippuden once you get there. But, I, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. Yeah, I did try watching the show, and I got to the Chunin exams, and then I just was like, uh... I think a lot of the shonen shows that I've been watching, they're all the same. They give you flashbacks to five seconds ago, even <laughs> One Piece. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to read the manga. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Sasuke, I can't believe you said you wanted a ham sandwich. I want a ham sandwich. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, it's so dumb. It's such a not great show, and I'll stand It's a by great that. manga. I have fun it's with very, it. I still it's fun. I, Naruto holds a special I, once, place. In every my heart. time, every time I talk about Naruto, being fun and being good are not equal. You can have a very fun manga story anime without it being objectively good. I agree with and that. And that's what Naruto is, <laughs> at least the anime. Manga I can fight a little bit for that. Anime is garbage. Yeah, the, the anime is definitely like junk food and anime, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. We've talked about that concept before. Well, time. we're going to watch it eventually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One day. Guys, God, I, I think I think it's time for our last rating of season 3. <gasps> wow. And then then and we can have definitive proof that I picked the best shows. Hey. Uh, it's our it's our seasonal who picked the best shows. You know, we should do that actually. Just have it seasonal. Jokes on you. I've I've done the math already. So I can't <laughs> believe you. We already All right. Read. It's plugged in on the Excel sheet. Just done. I can't believe it. I, I haven't seen the Excel sheet in years. Let me open that. And by years, well, cause, I mean like three weeks ago. Yeah, because I always put in the information and not you because I don't trust you people. <laughs> what do you mean? What if I wanted to make you put uh, five for Golden Time? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I would never. Okay, uh, Garb, what you rating it? I'm going to give it a straight up five. Wow. This was, this wow. was wonderful. I... It's seriously, like I said before, it's got everything. It's got fisticuffs. It's got airplane fighting. It's got um, wholesome. You know, it's got women's rights. It's a good That's fair. fucking movie. That's yeah. fair. And it's got a pig man, and he's not a bad pig man. Like he's not Ganon. That's pretty fun. Um, I got I got give it four point seven. Nice. I don't. It's not a. There's. Every time I give a, a really good show a high ranking, I always got to put an asterisk that I will. I am very rarely giving out five out of fives, and I've only given out one, and that's for High Q because that's five. personal bias. That's yeah. literally it. We Boca all Rosa get one. Is that v- that's I, a lie. I, I have like that's, five. I think. Yeah, you. <laughs> I think I do yeah, have five. You have a lot, but like Pokerosa is a very fun time. Would recommend it to anyone. It's a, it's a good laugh. It's a goof a gaff a laugh, you know. That's All the fair. things. I like that. I like that. What about you, Pino? This was such a pleasant time. I didn't think I'd find a Ghibli movie that I actually would enjoy, uh, despite the <laughs> fact that I ranked, like, I think the first Castle in the Sky, like, what, 4.4 or something? Yeah, I you did. gave it a... That was pretty high. I, I thought I hated it. I guess I didn't. No. <laughs> No, you, um, yeah, a four point four. Yeah, uh, obviously, I think this was better just because I just like the, the 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 quality of what I had and 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 the enjoyment that I had throughout the whole film. Um, is it five out of five? I really wish I could say it's five out of five. Uh, so I'm gonna get a four point eight. <laughs> it's, it's, it's damn near close. I just wish I knew if yeah. he was a man or not. <laughs> I need That's to it. know. <laughs> but everything else is such. A, it was such a treat. I loved it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh man! It's very fun. Well, guys, the race has ended. Yay. You all are beating each other up. You guys are beating me up. I don't know why I'm still talking. Uh, but to my left, there is Snail Po Garb. No, it's S Carb Go. <laughs> ah, I like that better. S Garb Go. Thanks. I, I didn't thought say it that up right. an hour ago and was like, oh. I must, I must hold on to this joke. <laughs> 
the one stepping on me. Well, that's 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 up Chuck to Chuck Chuck. You like that, don't you? I don't. Please. You, you, I'm in the water. Really like I can't that. breathe. We're, we're fighting in like the water. I, I know you love this. <laughs> you sick bastard. I don't. <laughs> it actually Gross. hurts. I can't and the guy actually this. drowning next to the, <laughs> next to the fish staring at me, uh, staring at me underwater. But that's me, Pino. I don't like this. <laughs> Goodbye. We've been the three wee bros. Um, we will always be the three wee bros, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, allegedly. I can't we, wait to see you. Uh -huh. Should we tell them what we're doing up well, next? Uh, well, I mean, well, like, the not not for next season quite yet. We've still got it. Yeah. Uh, so, so, as always, we're going to be taking a couple weeks, couple of, like, you know, like a month off, basically. Mm -hmm. Not meaning that you're not going to get content. We yeah. will still be releasing on our schedule every other week, as mm -hmm. we always do. But you get filler. But you will get the filler because we can only do so much canon. Exactly. Without... You know, our, our animators are tired. They said, "Hey, mm -hmm. let's let's um let's uh, let's get let's get those third parties to do some filler, and we got yeah. some filler lined up for you." What have we got in the what have we got in the works? So we're we're doing. I'm just gonna let you know one first off. Mm -hmm. We have the very fun season three in review, yeah. as we always do. You, we will learn. And talk about what we remember, what we liked, what we didn't like, and all the others. We learn. So get get your ass in gear and get ready to have some good times to reminisce about this last season. So enjoy it. Yeah. You know, every season needs a recap episode. Come on. <laughs> it's true. How Well, because cause these fools aren't going to be watching this whole thing. It's, you know, it's fair, you know, we, we have some jumpers around, you know, people who decide to skip Naruto Step or people, back from the ledge, huh? my friend. people who Maybe. skip Naruto, Boruto, or people Gio who just skip the time skip, you know, I can't believe you, you're all interrupting. <laughs> well, because, well, because you said jumper, so then I had to sing jumper by third eye blind. And I don't know why he sang Shio Wase. I don't know either, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> can't believe it. You said skip, you skip some, you exclude some. What are you school. talking about? <laughs> yeah. What's happening? I yeah. think the show is decomposing as we reach the final episode. <laughs> this is the last yeah, it's, episode. It's, it's it's like the plane limping to the to the finish. <laughs> it's broken as fuck. We're almost there. <laughs> We're beatboxing. <laughs> Anyways, before this gets any more funky, noisy podcast, uh, hope you guys enjoy. Enjoy that video coming up, and we've got other surprises for you, hopefully, with the next couple of ones for the filler. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope, let's get excited for uh, season four. We've got yeah. uh, got some good shows on the list for you, and some not, you know, not not as good shows, but you know. We'll, you know, uh, well, that's, uh, it's mostly a, a, a Garvin Pino. Choice. Whoa, 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 whoa. I've never whoa. picked a bad show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we'll learn about who picked the best shows and who picked the worst shows? I can't believe it. You, you'll never drop this, will you? <laughs> I will never drop this because I know I'm right. I can't believe this. I can't I know, believe you hate Panty and Stocking that much. I can't believe that Panty and Stocking isn't as good as everyone says it can't is. I can't believe it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> then anyways, um, this will be the last time we say for the season three, technically. So um, yeah, tell, your mom you, tell your mom you love her. And, um, yeah. You know? you, Enjoy enjoy the motorcycle ride. Yeah, we'll see you on the One last plot. ride down the motorcycle ride. Dude, yeah. this is the last time we watch Bobo. Oh. oh. It's and okay. that's where the episode ends. <laughs> bye. bye, bye. <laughs> see you guys. That was so sad. Uh.